Hi everyone, it's me, Mrs. Schreiber. Happy Wednesday. I'm back for the first time for most of you, but not for my class, to do a little math with you today. Now I know that Mr. Martin has been um, talking to you this week about regrouping in the ones place. We're working with vertical form, paper and pencil kind of math. And Mrs. Bowser talked to you yesterday about um, if you have to regroup 10 tens into a 100 whenever you're adding. And today I'm gonna to show you what it's going to look like if you have to regroup in both places. All right, here we go. Let's pull up our whiteboard. If I had to do this problem, 345 plus 568, when I look at that, it's probably not a problem that I'm gonna do mentally with any of our mental strategies. So doing it vertically with a paper and pencil is probably what I'm going to use for it, especially if I'm like you and I'm seven or eight years old. So we know that the first thing that we do whenever we do vertical form is if it's horizontally like this, that means we're going to have to stack it vertically to get it a vertical form. And when we do that, we want to transfer the numbers very carefully, making sure that we've are using the right numbers, but also making sure that we put each digit from each number in the right place. We want to stack ones on top of ones, tens on top of tens, and hundreds on top of hundreds. So if you start with the first number when you go to rewrite it, it looks like this. 345. And we're adding. So of course we'll put that plus sign down here off to the left. And then our next number is 568. It has a digit in the hundreds place, a digit in the tens place, and a digit in the ones place. So we'll use those places from our first number to help us line this up. So I'm going to put the five hundreds right under the three hundreds in our first number. I'm going to put the six tens from 568 in the tens place right under the four tens from our other number. And I'm going to put the eight ones right here under the five ones from our first number. So now that we have everything stacked up vertically, right where it should be, we'll drag that line underneath that line, and a vertical problem just means equals. Okay, so whenever we go to do this vertically, um, we have some concepts behind it. And so in order to show you that, I'm going to show you a place value disk drawing as I talk about this so that it makes sense to everybody out there. Do you know what those letters stand for that I'm writing? Ooh, I think I just heard someone say it. What does the H stand for? Hundreds, that's right. And the T? Tens, good job. And the O? Yeah, ones. So I don't have place value disks. So actually, maybe I'll try to use a stamp for this. I'm gonna do the number 345 with these hearts today, just to make it easier for me. So I've got three hundreds and three hundred forty-five, and I've got four tens, and I've got five ones. There we go. This represents the number three hundred forty-five. Maybe I'll pick a different stamp for my next one. Maybe I'll do stars. Okay, so my next number that I'm adding together, I want to leave a little space down here. I'm doing five hundred sixty-eight. So one two, three, four, five hundreds. And we have one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna move down, not because I'm out of space, but because whenever we do a place value just drawing like this, we wanna work like a mathematician. And mathematicians, when they're doing drawings, they'll draw, a, they'll draw a tens frame if they can, because we can quickly see five and one is six. And then my eight ones. So like a mathematician, I'll have a row of five, and then how many more will I need? That's right, three. Okay, so now I have 568. I'm all set up and I am ready to go. Only problem I have, I have a hard time finding my pencil again. So I am going to try to share that again to get my pencil to show up. There we go. That's my, that's my little trick because I'm new to this. All right. So whenever we look at our problem in ver vertical form, we always need to start where, boys and girls? That's right. The ones place. I'm so glad you knew that. 
Yeah. Sometimes whenever we solve problems mentally in our head, we use other strategies. But when we're using the strategy of using a paper and a pencil and stacking it vertically, we always have to start in the ones place. That's right. I'm so glad you knew that. So when we look in the ones place, we see the number five and the number eight. So that means we're adding five and eight together. If you're not sure what five and eight is, I bet you have some strategies for figuring that out. So I'll let you take a minute and think about what five plus eight is. Oh, I heard somebody out there say it. it's 13. That's right. And if we look over here at our drawing, we can see we've got five and five and we know that that's 10. And just like Mr. Martin taught us the other day, we regroup those. So 10 ones becomes a 10 and we draw our extra 10 right down there. And then that leaves us with those three ones because five and eight is 13, but 13 can't fit in this place. You can only fit one digit there. So we are going to put the three right down there, boys and girls. And if we do this on our vertical problem, we think, okay, five and eight is 13. There isn't room for two digits. We're going to take the ones number. We're going to put that three here. And now we have to regroup our 10. On our place value chart, it looks like this. But when we regroup like this, Mr. Martin and Mrs. Bowser probably showed you that we take that one from the tens place and 13 and we stick it over here in the tens column. Now, some people like to put it on the top, but I have a little trick that I like to use. And I like to stick that extra 10 that I'm regrouping right there on that line. The reason why I do that is because second graders especially are less likely to forget to add in that one if it's on the bottom for some reason. Either way you put it, if you put it at the top or if you put it on the line, either way is fine as long as you put it and you remember to add it in. Okay, so we have four plus six plus one in our vertical form, just like we have four plus six plus one over here. Now I hear a bunch of you saying four and six makes 10, four and six makes 10. And that's right. I'm so glad you know your ways to make 10. Four and six does make 10 and 10 tens makes a hundred. That's right. So in this problem, we've had to regroup 10 ones into a 10. And now we have to regroup our 10 tens into a hundred. We've had to regroup twice in this problem. And so that left this 110 over here because four plus six is 10 plus one more is 11. So we take the one in the ones place there and we regroup the other one in the hundreds place. What that looks like over here is we put the one from the ones place and 11 there and then we regroup those 10 tens into 100 and we stick it right there. Now, just like in the last place, you could put it at the top, but you're less likely to forget to add it in if you stick it at the bottom. And so now we have three plus five plus one. This is the easiest part of all. Three plus five is eight plus one is nine. That's right. Three plus five plus one is nine. So now we have our answer, 913. That's right, boys and girls. Man, you're troopers. Thanks for helping me out with this one. So today we had to regroup ones into tens and we had to regroup some of those tens into a hundred. Today we're working on regrouping in both places. You can log on to your Freckle accounts and most of your teachers, hopefully all of your teachers, have a math assignment for this waiting for you um, in the From My Teacher section on your Freckle account. So look there. If you don't have any assignments from your teacher waiting there, log on to your Freckle account, go to math, and then go to adaptive practice so that you can get more practice with this today. Tomorrow, I think Mrs. Hughes will be with you for a little bit of math, and she's going to sort of mix it up. Sometimes you're going to have to regroup one. Sometimes you're going to have to regroup 10. Sometimes you might not have to regroup anything. So we're looking at all different types of vertical math problems this week. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope all of you are safe and happy. We love you and we miss you. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.